Today I'm going to show you how to use ivory black oil paint in a glaze over a portrait. But first, a quick history on where this painting started and how we got here to using the black oil paint glaze. I felt like I was off to a good start with this transparent oxide brown underpainting. Look at my reference in the computer monitor here on the left. You can see it's a pretty overcast day and that was the first problem that I had to overcome with this painting. I decided that bumping up the saturation and increasing the contrast should take care of that problem and I would proceed with the painting from there. I started with neutral highlights and warm shadows. Once I had the first layer of color down, it just wasn't going in the direction that I had hoped. I needed to make some changes. So I thought of, let's make it a nocturne since we're dealing with such a flat light in the first place. Look for my video at the end explaining how to paint a nocturne. This would be my second attempt at turning a daylight photo reference into a nocturne painting. Once I completed the initial overpass turning it into the nocturne, it still felt like it was lacking in something. It needed more edge or grit. It needed to feel more vintage perhaps. It was just missing something I felt like. As I was pondering my next move for this painting, I came across the 10 type photography style. And that's when it hit me. This is the direction I need to take my painting into. It's funny, you never know where inspiration's gonna strike. So what is tintype photography? Basically, it's an old style of photograph that is produced on a thin sheet of metal that's been covered with a lacquer or enamel. Tintype photography was popular between 1860 and 1870. Now it's become a novelty and a modern day fine art medium. Because the lacquered iron support, no tin was ever used, was durable and required no drying time, a tintype photograph could be developed and handed to a customer in only a few minutes. This made it a popular attraction at fairs and carnivals. Photographers would travel about the country in covered wagons, photographing battle scenes from the Civil War and the Wild West. There are still some modern day photographers out there that are using it as a stylistic choice for their photographs. For my glazing technique today, I was deciding between the Gamblin solvent-free gel or the Rublev walnut oil gel. And after a few moments of thinking about it, I decided to go with the walnut oil gel. The solvent tends to dry more quickly and I just knew that the walnut oil gel would just really keep things loose and I'd have time to make adjustments and not be too worried about <laughs> anything being too permanent. So I'm using a transparent earth red with a ivory black and I'm going to have a little bit of a pile with the red more predominant and then I'm going to have another pile where the black is more predominant. It has just only a hint of red in it. I'm thinking I want to use the more pure black over the flesh tones. In my mixture I'm aiming for one part medium versus two parts oil paint. Okay, I'm ready to start glazing. I'm not going to jump into the face immediately. I want to start out in an area that's a little less important, like down here towards the bottom left of the canvas. I know whatever happens down here, I can pretty easily uh, work with it. Notice that you can see the painting through the glaze and that's important. That is what you want when you're glazing. You want to see the painting underneath, especially in areas that are lighter. Glazing can be thought of as tinting the under layers of paint. It creates sort of a stained glass effect or imagine that you lay a colored piece of cellophane over your painting. I'm using a lint free cloth to wipe away the glaze. I don't recommend using paper towels for this job. So you can vary the ratio of pigment to glazing medium to change the strength of the glazing tint. So in areas where I want it to be a bit more dark because we are using a black, predominantly black glaze, I'm going to kind of dip my brush more into the paint and just barely touch into the walnut oil gel. Now areas like when we get to the flesh tone, I'm going to want to use more of that um, one part medium to two parts paint. I don't want to have a lot of strength when I get over the flesh tone. 
not in that first pass anyway. I want to test it out slowly and cautiously. So glazing over a large area such as a background or clothing with the same U can yield in a richer, deeper colorfulness while at the same time oiling out any sunken areas on the paint surface. But that aside, why did I want to glaze black over this painting in the first place? It didn't feel unified to me. It felt like the whole painting was kind of separate, like, you know, the background was separate from the figure. I really wanted to unify the figure into the background and glazing a one color over, say, the subject in the background, although I am leaving out the sky, I didn't want to affect the really saturated night blue sky there. So I'm only glazing over any area that's more of that greenish color and the figure. And that was in order to unify the painting and really solidify that subject into the background area. Notice here where the fireflies are. When I wipe away the glaze, that yellow is beautifully preserved. It's not affected. You can see I've glazed the left side of the painting and I have not yet glazed the right side. So it's a good time to step back and look at the painting and make a comparison and decide, am I continuing <laughs> with this process? Is it working? Is it doing what I want it to do? And my answer was yes. I felt like it improved the painting greatly. Here you can see where I've been kind of mixing a little bit of the paint in with the medium. I'm just kind of judging how much um, tinting strength I want. And now, especially moving into the face, I wanted to be careful. I didn't have a, a lot of paint mixed in with the medium here. I went pretty um, cautious and slow until I was um, really solidly sure <laughs> that I was happy with the effect. And I was. I feel like the glazed side there on the right versus not glazed on the left was really improving the look. It just, I needed her to look like she was in the night and just a little grittier. Just, it was too saccharine, too sweet looking. I, I wanted this to be edgy. When I started painting Clementine, I, I wanted it to feel like almost she was ghostly, like, is she here? Is she not here? Is this a, you know, a ghost from the past that, you know, was here a long time ago? I just wanted it to have this kind of ghostly, ten type photography style look to it. And when I thought about it initially in my mind, I didn't know about ten type photography, but I had that sort of feeling and look that I was thinking that I was trying to get to, but I didn't really have the initial image in my mind, which was the first mistake. I probably should have researched it or done some more uh, thinking about it before I started painting. But you never know, this is how I end up getting to the final result. It was the journey for this painting and some paintings are just like that. You start in one spot completely different from where you finally end up. And I knew right away once I glazed over the face that yes, oh, finally, this is the look that I've been going for. So when you're glazing over lighter value areas, it is perfectly acceptable and fine to do a second layer. Now, I caution you, most information that I've come across when it talks about glazing says that if you do a second layer of glaze over mid-tone shadow areas, more darker areas of your painting, be careful because it can result in murky or muddied areas. And that's not what we're going for here. Another note with glazing, once you're finished, you're happy with the results. I worked on this glaze with the painting in a vertical orientation on my easel, which is perfectly fine. But once you're done, you want to let your painting dry flat horizontally. This will help to avoid any drips from your glazing medium. Now your glazing medium shouldn't be so thin that it's syrupy or drippy. And you know, using the walnut oil gel helps with that. And even that Gamblin solvent is more gel-like. But if you're mixing, say, a stand oil with a little bit of Damar varnish for your uh, glazing medium, you know, just be careful of that. Make sure you dry your painting horizontally. Here's a look at the face where I started and where I ended up on the right. Now I understand what's happening with the flesh tone, so I'm feeling very confident to go ahead over that hand, the arm, 
make some of that glaze uh, work through the braids and in the front of the dress. And then I get pretty heavy handed there with the glaze on the shadow side. Uh, the right side of the subject in the painting is in the shadow. So I feel like, especially on the figure, I can be pretty dark. Now the light behind her, even though she's in the shadow on that side, that's, that area could be getting a little bit more moonlight because it is a nocturne. And one of the things with nocturnes, you know, the light tends to be more muted. It's not as bright as sunlight. It's not as warm. So you're looking at more cooler lights. And I ended up with this weird kind of stained spot here. I see that I can wipe it away if I, you know, push pretty hard. But then it left kind of a cool light weird spot so I decide all right I'll work with that this is a tin type uh, feeling stylistically that I'm going for anyway so it actually was fine so I thought I'll just add more paint in and uh, see what happens we'll just go with it make it work <laughs> it's almost what would happen with a tin type photograph anyway you'd end up with these weird um, I guess you could refer to them as blemishes but you know that's the effect I wanted Here's the edge, as you can see in the tintype photograph, how they're kind of black and scratchy and gritty. I love the look of it. Not to mention their subjects back then were kind of crazy looking. How fun was that? I love those uh, old photographs. So I just finish it off. I don't want to get into the sky too much. And I just make sure that the rest of the painting has that kind of tintype style feel and sort of the edginess. I didn't want the skin tones to be too saturated or too warm, but I feel like they worked out okay. The whole painting had a bit more warmth because I did add that uh, transparent oxide earth red into the black. So I think it worked out well. Once it dries, I could always push the limits and go back over the face. I wouldn't go over the other mid or mid-tones or shadow areas, but I could go over the face again if I feel like it's still reading a bit too saturated. I'm going to wait for it to dry and then make that final call. But I'll give you guys a look at the really cool custom frame that my husband made for this painting. It's made out of 100-year-old barn wood, and it's got some beautiful antique um, black iron scrolling in each corner. So here's a look at Clementine in her frame. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one and be sure to check out the video on how to paint a nocturne.